Welcome to Heathcote Electronics video about infrared detection. The infrared detector is located between those two sleepers. When anything goes above it, the emitter which sends up infrared, it will get re reflected back onto the detector. This will cause the LED to light. The particular circuit board we are using to demonstrate this is the ADOT1 and it really has two uses. One use is if you've got hidden locations on your model railway, it may even be inside tunnels and you want to be able to see an indication that a train's arrived there or is waiting there on your control panel. So that's the purpose of the LED. The other use of the ADOT1 is if you have for example a shuttle so when the train runs towards the end of the track you want to be able to tell the shuttle board via the ADOT1 the trains arrive there so the train stops and waits before going back again this is the ADOT1 the ADOT1 is the first product I designed for Heathcote Electronics AIRDOT stands for Infrared Detection of Trains. The, this is probably the simplest infrared detector we make. The terminals on the AIRDOT 1 are numbered. They're numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Connect the power, you connect 1 to positive 6 to negative. Uh, you can also connect to 16 volts AC but it works very well off 12 volts DC. So if we find the, this is one of the power supplies with the connector snipped off. If we find the positive Plug the power in, on, watch the LED, when an object gets near it, it lights up. So that's my hand reflecting the infrared back. If I get a wagon, the underside of the wagon does the same thing. Now this fits underneath the baseboard and the emitter and detector go just beneath the sleeper level. So I get a piece of, um, just to show that this works with N-gauge as well, it's a piece of N-gauge track. Just to show that it works with N-gauge track. The emitter and detector don't need the sleepers moving or anything, as long as they're located in between the two. The dot one is supplied with a 5mm diameter red LED, but there's no reason at all why you can't use different colours or different sizes if you want to. This shows you the size of a 3mm green LED. When we talk about 5mm or 3mm, it's a measurement of the diameter. When you're extending the LED to the control panel, you're going to need to run two wires from terminal 5 and 6 to the LED. It's just a matter of screwing them in the terminals for the air dot one end, but at the LED end, you're going to have to either solder them on, or if you don't want to solder, you could use a terminal block. Cut off two parts of the terminal block. So it's a little bit clumsy compared to soldering, but it will do the job. So remember that that one is the long one. Uh, 
I'll get two lengths of wire. It's always best to twist the ends with this multi-stranded wire. I prefer the multi-stranded wire though because the single strand wire where you bear it, it tends to get a little nick and it tends to make it um, so it, a tendency to just break there so I put black on the short leg brown on the long leg the insulation off the other ends the brown wire goes into terminal 5 and the brown wire connects to the long leg of the LED the black wire goes into terminal 6, it shares it with the power supply to switch the power back on I should see something happening If you can see the LED, if we detect a wagon, so everything's working properly. Now we'll fit the air dot one underneath the track. I've made a hole there in the track. Now the baseboard is about half an inch and the emitter and detector stick up 22 millimeters which is about three quarters of an inch so you can see they come too high we want those at that level so the thing to do is to get a piece of scrap wood or cord and to use it as packing and by chance if this works out at exactly the right size so they're just below the level of the baseboard surface so to screw the packing into place now for the dot one board Now we can turn everything over and see what's happening. The power needs plugging in again. It's always safest to unplug the power or disconnect the power. Because it only takes a, a wire short into the circuit board and you might do some damage to it. So if a wagon comes along and there's the LED light straight away. There's the emitter and detector. The A.1 
has an infrared emitter and an infrared detector. Infrared is emitted out of here and if anything is above it, like my hand, it gets reflected back onto the detector and the LED lights. To explain what infrared is, if you see a rainbow or you put white light through a prism, you see a spectrum of colours going from red, yellow, green, blue, violet. Now, this spectrum carries on, although we can't see it with our eyes. After violet, we get ultraviolet, which is a thing that gives you sunburn. Then we get x-rays. Going the other way, before red, we get infrared. Before that, we get radio waves. Now, although we can't see infrared, some insects can see it, and they will see plants for example in a completely different way to how we see them. There's also on some mobile phones you can change to infrared. Um, the reason it's used for night vision is hot objects give off infrared. But it behaves very similar to light. So on our infrared devices that's exactly what we use and that is sent in the beam and reflected back just as if it was light. 